Ten years ago this week, a three-year-old boy went missing. Thousands of you helped look for Marcus Faisal until we learned the two people trusted to protect him actually killed him. That case spanned several counties. It took months to work through the justice system, and it broke hearts across the tri-state. Not on your side, IT team reporter Hillary Lake has new details about the one piece of evidence allowing prosecutors to file criminal charges against foster parents Liz and David Carroll. Hillary? A group of determined law enforcement officials, a hunch that paid off, and a deal with the suspect. That's the recipe prosecutors used to get justice for Marcus. Ten years ago, Joe Dieters knew he had to do something to get justice for three-year-old Marcus Faisal. I said, come in on Sunday. Come in tomorrow. I want to talk to these detectives tomorrow. That was August 27, 2006. Faisal was already missing for weeks. Now, the Hamilton County prosecutor is sharing how the most crucial hours of the search played out. I said to the detectives, when was the last time anyone outside his family saw him alive? Until this point, the search for the autistic toddler was focused in and around Julius Park. The detective said, well, they went to Kentucky for a family reunion. Faisal's foster mom, Liz Carroll, made a public plea for help just five days earlier. I'm asking that anybody that saw me with my kids or saw me or saw Marcus to please contact the authorities. We suspected her from the very start. Hamilton County detectives went to Kentucky to determine if Faisal was there for that family reunion, and his team made a bold move. We served Amy Baker, who was the live-in girlfriend, and Liz Carroll simultaneously in two separate police cars with forth forthwith subpoenas, which requires them to come to the grand jury immediately. Prosecutors believed Baker would talk. I said, ma'am, you don't know me. But you're going to go in front of that grand jury in about five minutes. And if you lie to that grand jury, you're going to prison. Baker eventually buckled, telling prosecutors and the grand jury Marcus Faisal wasn't missing. He was dead, she claimed, at the hands of her roommates and Faisal's foster parents. They wrapped him in a blanket like a cocoon and wrapped him in packing tape and threw him in a playpen. Then Liz Carroll got her turn to talk. And she was telling that same kidnapping story that she's been telling for the last, you know, four weeks. As she spoke, investigators learned Marcus never went to Kentucky. Word of that quickly got to prosecutors. And she just froze because she knew we knew now. A grand jury transcript shows Carroll said Faisal's death was an accident. She told how he was left alone in a closet after he was bound with tape in a blanket. She also said she was innocent. They treated him like trash. Amy Baker's testimony also led detectives to Marcus's remains. She said she drove with Liz Carroll's husband, David, to this chimney in Brown County and burned the boy's body. In exchange, prosecutors made her a deal. Sometimes you have to agree to do something to, to get the truth out. Liz and David Carroll eventually went to trial for Faisal's murder in Claremont County because Faisal died in their home there. She rejected a plea deal despite her grand jury testimony in Hamilton County. It was used as evidence against her. We offered him both 15 to life. He let Liz roll the dice first and she lost. Yet it's justice for Marcus Faisal, a little boy who was forgotten in life, but a boy so many won't ever forget.